In this video, I want to explain the difference between factorial, permutation, and choose. So if you take a look at your calculator, just find the place where you can see an n exclamation, which is n factorial, and where you can see ncr and npr. In this video, I'm going to show you when you should use these buttons. Now, if you can't find these buttons on your calculator, then you might want to throw it out and get a better one. Let's start with n factorial. For a really easy example, let's say that I have three things, like these three different colored markers, and I want to arrange them in a row. So I could arrange them with the blue one first and then purple and red, or I could keep the blue one first and swap these two like that, or I could put the red one first, and then I have this option as well as uh, this option. And finally, I could put the purple one first, and I have this option as well as this option. So there were several ways to do that. Let's count them out. The number of ways to arrange three objects. Let's think about the first position, the second position, and the third position. So when I hold my markers, and I'm talking about the first marker, the second marker, and the third marker, I have three choices for what I want to put in the first position, and as soon as I make that choice, now I'm only going to have two for the remaining. Let's say I choose red for the next position, now I only have one left for this. So, it's pretty straightforward to see that there are three choices for the first position, times the two choices for the second position, times the one choice that you're remaining for the last position. And we write this as three factorial. So let's just check it out. Let's see if it works. Three. And now I have to select this n factorial. Well, I don't want to push the four, so I have to use the shift function and then push it. And I get immediately my answer, six. Because I know that three factorial is three times two times one, which is six. Now, granted, you can do three times two times one in your head, but if you're thinking about 10 objects and you want to arrange them in any, in any possible way and you want to know how many ways to do that, that's 10 factorial. So how would you write that? You would say that the number of ways to arrange 10 objects is 10 factorial, which is equal to 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So you don't really want to type all those numbers into your calculator and that's why we have the factorial button. So you can just type it in. 10 now I'm going to use the shift and factorial. So that's the answer for the number of ways to arrange 10 different objects in a row. Now let's say you have 10 objects and you don't care about arranging all 10 of them. Maybe you have 10 books and you want to put only four of those books onto a bookshelf. Or you might want to know how many ways you could do that. So let's say you have 10 books and you want to order four of them only onto a bookshelf. Well, then you really have the similar kind of problem where you're going to have four positions. Those are the four books that you're going to end up with, but you have 10 choices of books right now. And so in the first position, you're going to have 10 choices. Now that you've used up one of the books, you only have nine books left to choose for the next position. And now that you've used up another book, you only have eight choices. And finally, you have seven choices. So this would be the number of ways to arrange four objects from a collection of 10 objects. Now, you might wonder, why is it that I know that I'm multiplying here? Let's think about an easy example, like what you're going to have for breakfast. Let's say you have four types of bread, and you have two types of jam, and you want to make toast with jam. So first you're going to choose some bread to use, and then you're going to choose some jam to use. So you have four choices for your first task, and you're going to follow that by two choices for your next task. So basically you could think about it as like a decision tree, where you're going to decide on one of the four options for bread, and then once you've made one of those choices, you have to now decide which type of jam. So the total number of outcomes is eight, so four times two. So if you need to perform two tasks, or in general, many tasks, a series of tasks, what you need to do to figure out how many ways there are to do it is to just multiply the number of ways to do the first task followed by the number of ways to do the second task. Let's take the example where I'm arranging three pens. 
We know that the answer is 3 factorial, but let's think about it a little bit more. Once I choose one of the three things to go into the first position, my next task has a different number of choices. So what I really need to do is to look at, given the information that I've already completed task number one, that has affected my choice number two. And that's why there's only two choices for the next one, and then only one choice for the final one. So it's a little bit different from the toast. It would be as if once you choose rye bread, you're only allowed to choose strawberry jam, and then you don't have two choices anymore. Let's take a look again at 10 objects, and we want to order only four of those objects. We know that the number of ways to do that is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. So that sounds a little bit like factorial, right? Because it looks kind of like that pattern, but we stopped at some point. We stopped when we got to 7. We didn't continue on 6, 5, 4, and 3, and 2, and 1. We didn't do that. So if you wanted to just do this directly on your calculator, this is how you would do it. You would do 10 permute 4 because your calculator knows exactly what that means and it says, okay, all you're trying to do is you have 10 objects and you would like to arrange only four of those objects and you'd like to know how many ways there are to do that. So if I have 10 objects and I want to arrange only four of those and I care about the order, I need to use this P button and PR. So I have to use again the shift to get this P and notice that it'll tell me that that's what I'm using. Now I have to tell it what my R is. My R is four. The answer is 5,040. As a double check, let's make sure that we get 5,040 if we do it the way we know is correct. And that is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. That's correct. So if you type in 10 permute 4 into your calculator, it will give you this answer, 10 times 9 times 8 times 7, but it'll of course give you the full product. But let's think about what it actually is. So far, I've written 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So I've written 10 factorial, but we obviously know that that's not the answer. The answer was this. So I have to divide out by the piece that doesn't make any sense here, this piece. That's the piece that you don't care about. Why do you not care about that? Well, you have these 10 objects. Let's say you arrange all 10 objects and you figure out the number of ways to arrange all 10 objects. That's 10 factorial but now you're only worried about the first four. So the number of ways to arrange all that last part is not necessary. You don't need to worry about arranging those last six, so you divide out by that. When I divide out by six factorial, what have I done? I've just canceled all of this. Six times five times four times three times two times one. I'll use a different color. All right, so that makes sense. Let's write this down completely. 10 factorial divided by 10 minus 4 factorial. That's exactly the same thing as 10 factorial divided by 6 factorial, but it's just a way to remember because in general, if you have n objects and you're trying to permute only r of those objects, by the way, permute means to select with order, then your answer will be n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. So now hopefully we understand what n factorial means and also what n p r or n permute r means. What about this guy over here, n choose r? How is that different from n p r? Let's figure that out. So I've written here again the definition of n factorial which you should remember is the number of ways to permute or order n objects in a row. Now, npr is doing the same thing, except you only want to order r of those objects. So r has to be less than or equal to n. So let's now think about what would happen if you have 10 objects or people or things or whatever, let's say 10 objects, and now you want to select four of those, but you don't care about the order in which they are placed. For example, maybe you're not putting books on a shelf, maybe you have people that you're selecting for a committee, and it doesn't matter if you pick Alice and then Bob, or Bob and then Alice, because they're gonna both end up on the committee. So those sort of ways come out equivalent. So what do you do if you don't care about the order? Well, all you do is you can think. Let's say that I was going to pick them where order matters. That would be like using 
NPR, or in this case, 10P4. So here in our example, we're looking at the number of ways to select, where select means that order doesn't matter, four objects from a collection of 10. And we're starting off by saying, let's do 10P4. If we do 10P4, that's going to give us the number of ways to select four things or four objects, but we have some ordering on those objects. Every different ordering was counted. So we want to just divide out by how many ways there are to arrange those four people. What's that? That's four factorial. So we get 10 factorial divided by 10 minus 4 factorial. This was just the definition of 10p4. And then we have to divide by 4 factorial. Because we've arranged and picked our four people, but all those different orderings were counted, so what we have to do is divide out by the number of ways to arrange those four people. So that's the difference. And PR means permuting or selecting with order, and that's what you're going to get, NPR. And CR means selecting without ordering, and that's what you're going to get if you type it into your calculator, NCR. Our last example is if we have 10 people and we only want to choose four of them so we don't care about the order in which we choose them, we're going to do 10, then we again select the shift to get our choose function, and then we put in the 4, and it equals 210. Notice that there are fewer ways to choose four people from 10 than there were to permute. In fact, if we took this number of ways to choose the four people from 10, and then we multiplied by the number of ways to arrange those four people, so we would times that by 4 factorial, we get back the number of ways to choose and arrange. So you can choose and arrange or do it all at once with the P. So if you type into your calculator 10C4, it's really doing 10 choose 4. It's counting for you the number of ways to select four objects from a group of 10. So maybe you have 10 people that have to go on a committee and you want to know how many possible ways this committee can be built and there's four members in the committee. The answer is 10C4. See you next time. We could have 2 to the power of 32 different possible 0-1 sequences.